Okay, so here is today's over the board game, a league match. So it's the first league match of the season, of the new season for 2022 to 2023. And this game is an hour and 50 minutes with a 10 second increment. Playing, I'm 1308 as we know, and I'm playing a 1657. So that's 350 points ish higher than myself. I entered the room and I looked at the listings and then I went over to our captain who was in the middle of a game playing against a 2000 pluser. <laughs> um, he looked at me, I looked at him and I says, but this guy is really good. And he went, just play the game <laughs> in his tone. And I looked at the listings again and our team was absolutely outclassed with rate, with the ratings. It was unbelievable. I felt sorry for our captain actually because <laughs> and the rest of the um, um, higher up um, players because they were playing absolute monsters. <laughs> so inside it did make me kind of chuckle because they were playing the meat on the bones ones and we were playing, well I was playing a 1600 which was 350 points higher than myself. I shouldn't grumble, should I? But I did. Anyway, so I sat in front of the the player. I've seen this player play before. I'm not too sure if I've played them before. I might have done. Um, no, I think I just saw them play. And he's um, a mature player, again. So as we mentioned, when we played um, in the recent tournament where we played the last game, we played a mature player and I'd seen him play before as well and they do the inchy inchy type pawn type things and they kind of sit and wait for you to do stuff um, so they don't really overextend or anything like you end up falling into their traps because you're kind of just blasting out there and overextending your pieces and then they take advantage of your bad positions so um, I would class this player as um, probably better than the person who I played in the tournament um, because I have seen them play before and this it does it really does do this sit back and wait type thing. Um, I don't think he'll ever change this um, character trait of his. So I thought well we've been doing our training, we've been doing our research and we want to be a chameleon so we can hopefully ebb and flow with players. Um, so I sat there and I thought to myself well I really don't kind of stand a chance do I but I am actually going to put it in, I'm going to try and um, help the team if I can in any way shape or form but it was looking a little bit dire right from the start. But anyway um, I'm highlighting the game um, I'll be highlighting all of my games hopefully fingers crossed if I have the time to do it um, because this is the continuation from the 2018-19 so we played as white so you'd think that would be an advantage yes but anyway so we went with our tried and tested e4 keeping it nice and simple but this is just me charting my progress or lack of progress in certain areas um, as we're going through potentially trying to use the answer process so we developed the knight all pretty straightforward stuff nice and steady away as i know the, the i know the player um not best buddies but i've seen them play um their style doesn't really change much so they bring the knight out so we push through the center here now i said to myself if he takes this pawn i will be very surprised indeed and they actually took, so I sat back. Uh, it must have been a, a while. Um, I'd actually joined the session late, so my clock was um, already running down. But, you know, it's, we've got plenty of time. So I sat and I looked at this and I thought, oh, has he changed his style? He's taking, he's taking a piece. What's going on here? So that surely must be rattling his own personal cage there because I've not, I've not seen him take before usually just sitting waiting you know developing the bishop slowly but surely so in my head I'm thinking okay I think you've rattled yourself there by actually capturing that pawn because that isn't your usual style so if I'm kind of subliminally making them do something they didn't want to do then maybe I'm gaining an advantage even from this early stage here it's like somebody training in the boxing and they they've got a lethal left hand left left punch 
but they never use the left punch you know throughout the whole match so they don't use that advantage um that they've got this in, this was a case in point here where he's like thrown a right hand punch when his left hand is the strongest so it's kind of unbalanced unbalanced them already right at the very start of the game fingers crossed i'm hoping i'm trying to use the psychology because they are 1657 i'm only 1308 so i've got to try and use some science so we capture as we do normally this is normal for us and they sat there for a while absolute ages thinking of the next move so obviously they weren't going to be capturing the knight anymore they're going to be bringing the bishop out here you know as we've seen before we'll be tired to bring it here but i think they'll bring it here this is what i was thinking and we're fairly used to that because we just want to keep things simple and they do bring the bishop out after a long way and for a brief moment i thought to myself oh shall i get all arty you know shall i bring it here attacking the pawn here all that sort of stuff and then i quickly came back to my senses because based on the experience that we had in the tournaments which have been really a godsend in in that sense um being arty doesn't work we have to work with the way we train so we took the knight off the board there was nothing that we going to be worried about from any position that he's looking for i mean if he's looking to come with sorry the queen here where we can handle that we can just bring our queen here and we're, we're still going to be in balance so there's nothing really surprising at this moment and then they captured with the pawn i couldn't believe my eyes First they captured in the centre with the pawn here, then they captured with this pawn here. So in my head, I'm thinking, I've kind of made them do moves that they do not like doing. They do not play like this. Not when I've seen them play. You know, I mean, we're talking like two or three years ago now when I saw them, because obviously we had the lockdown and stuff. Um, so I'm feeling fairly comfortable, but again, I, I have seen the player play. Um, they have got skills, they know how to move the pieces, they know they can do all sorts of tactics, that type of stuff. So I'm just sitting waiting nice and patiently. But I'm happy, potentially in my head, that we've won two key tempi with them actually capturing and then capturing again. Really surprised. So we develop our bishop now, looking to just support, keeping it very simple, not really looking to extend. They bring the knight out. We bring our bishop through, x-ray through to the queen, all normal, usual stuff. And then they bring the bishop back. So again, that's like a, to me, it's another key tempi. We're kind of making them do stuff they don't want to do. It's had to bring the same piece back again to defend the knight. So surely we're, we're up in the movement on the board. When I'm talking tempo, the movement on the board in order to develop our pieces to try and get better positions because when you look at it he's just jammed in his own queen and his queen is blocked by this pawn this bishop is a little bit lonely at the minute and i did have sights but we'll come to that later so yeah looking at this position it it was it just smacked of what i'd seen them play before in terms of just sitting from the back waiting for you to overextend but this looks really jammed in so to develop the knight now just thinking well okay let's get our last piece out and it's supporting the pawn here maybe with sights of jumping around a little bit you know something like that but it all depends on what the opponent does So then did a little inchy pawn push. That's the kind of stuff I'm used to seeing. Um, and is it to open up the bishop here? So I was very wary that yes, they potentially could do that. But all the while we can just simply push the end pawn up here. So it's a little disturbance which can be a bit annoying, but either way. And I was thinking, can the queen come and get a check on the king at this moment? No, because this pawn is blocking that area. So now I'm thinking, well, you know, could my queen get here? And um, this was even before I got castled and I'm, I'm there going, oh, could I come here? And then 
attack the bishop because nothing's there and oh and then if he doesn't take and then comes here then i'll go here like this and then his rook comes here and then i had this vision of his bishop not actually even being there and then i said oh then i could take this and have a check on his king so i had that sort of picture in my head not visualizing that the bishop would come here and be defending the pawn so i'm thinking i'm going to be in so it's at this point i did have this thought in my head this pattern was stuck in my head for ages and I, I just couldn't let it go so we castled feeling we're fairly okay ish but we just really want to know what his plan is at this moment in time we can envisage and I think he could smell the blood of this pawn pushing onto the knight so I think his whole movements were around trying to prevent this from happening so they castled and then we brought the queen up remember the pattern that i said i'd seen coming here attacking then the rook comes here like that and then i'll be able to take this off the board if the bishop doesn't take if the bishop takes then the queen comes here yep so the queen comes into this spot and it's going to be on this pawn here it's looking good you know um the queen can come here and just defend can't it you know and if the rook was already here it would be able to come down and put a check on the king I didn't see that at that moment. All I saw was, ooh, I, I can smell blood. That's what I can smell. And then I'm going to get gain, ad gain an advantage, getting my queen up there and getting these pawns off. So the rook comes across now facing our queen. Did have a bit of a flap for a while because I'm thinking, oh, I hope I'm not going to get caught in one of those um, queen zugzwang situations, you know, where they push the pawn here and I can't take it because his rook is um, opposite, opposite my queen. So that really did have me having a bit of a flap. I mean, I do have the rook coming across here, um, but still my queen is in front. So am I going to fall foul of some type of situation where his rook gets my queen? That was a little bit of a worry. So I thought, right, let's focus on the king side area. Uh, these moves weren't done as quickly as this trust me um we both took absolutely ages over each of the moves um when i finished the notation and i put it onto the system you know as we're looking at it now for analysis um i was surprised at how many moves we actually got through it wasn't that many but the time we took over each of the moves was really quite <laughs> significant. So I decided to push through after a long thought. I was still thinking about this here. Um, but for some reason now I was going, well, I don't think that actually works. You know, I think because this comes around here, um, if the position's a little bit better, maybe we might go for it later. So then I thought I'll plump for attacking the king side area. So maybe that will force them to do something they don't want to do. It's also supporting this pawn push here if we were potentially going for that and you could see you could see he was sensing that that's potentially where we, where we were looking to go um i thought it was a nice idea but i did think well maybe he's just going to push his pawn here then i have to do a bit of a dance get the bishop round it's still supporting this pawn and that diagonal so he eventually moved the knight and it's in the way of the queen and it's blocking the bishop now so in my head i was thinking oh this is gonna be golden if we can grab this no matter what he takes with the queen or the the knight is still blocking the bishop so maybe we can actually go and attack this bishop i'd had this move in my head right from the early doors and i thought i'm gonna have to pull i'm gonna have to pull it off I'm going to have to do it, even if it is that it just takes the bishop off the board. At least we've got our pieces kind of trying to own this file here, which is it looks like a key file to be owning. This pawn can protect itself for a period of time. Potentially looking to get the rook across here, you know, and owning the file a bit more. So it felt homely oops that's not what i did there we go <laughs> okay so we captured the bishop so we're on the queen and then the queen captures so as we said this this knight is blocking the bishop the bishop's not really had any play so after a long fought we did actually go for it and the gauge bar doesn't like that move i really 
in my head I still as I was doing the move I thought surely this can't be right but I'm just going to get it off the board thing is the knight bishop isn't actually doing anything to me it's not doing anything at all in the game so really why did I take my bishop away from here where it was doing a grand job protecting both these pieces and that's what I thought after I'd actually done the move I thought well maybe that wasn't the best so we attacked the, the bishop and then they came through with the fancy knight move here I did actually put that in my calculation as well and after all of that that's why I did it I just said well I'm still just going to take it off the board you know and then it's more equal because we've got knights here you know knights rooks queen and the ownership of this file is going to be key and I felt the pattern looked a little bit better for us in terms of strength so I took the bishop off the board and then I did actually offer a draw at this point because um, I did feel like we had more presence along the center um, potential threats more threats towards his king Gary but obviously um, <laughs> that was kindly kindly declined <laughs> just want to see how it works out in the next few moves so he grabbed the bishop so we doubled the rook well doubled with the queen supporting so we've got like three pieces um, supporting at the minute so I'm thinking what else is he going to actually try and put onto this pawn but if he's going to put all his efforts into trying to go for this pawn we might be able to improve our position ever so slightly at each stage he attempts to come forward because his playing style is definitely not attacking just based on what I know his, his, his playing style is not attacking it's a counter attacker he, he takes advantage of the weaknesses that you have um, when you've overextended so we were doing quite well we attempted anyway to try and do a lot of blind spot blocking so where is he looking to attack what can we block off but at the same time are we making progress and developing our pieces even if it's the smallest of developments are we developing so they come for the simple attack onto the pawn so that's easily defended and then they move the knight in front of the queen I thought this again I, in my head I don't know if it's right or wrong but uh, in my head I thought that's got to be a major loss in tempe it's actually blocked the pieces that are actually trying to rule this file and then I saw his plan because his plan was to come here to try and disturb my queen my knee jerk reaction was to go here with my pawn attacking the knight but then it would have invited him here and is attacking both pieces so as we said we were really kind of actively um, trying to cover the blind spots and really block them off but at the same time developing pieces a little bit further because it kind of stops the rook from coming down here which I thought they were going to be attempting to do to come across here and put more weight onto the pawn so this pawn is really crucial it's a fantastic pawn just for that moment anyway so I thought so then they push down through the center again this inchy inchy of the pawns um in the games that i've seen them play um they they don't attack like this you know they they keep them all formed up you know keep them all together this is why i mean <laughs> he's got double pawns here he's got no pawn in the center here and this is definitely not their playing style so i could feel their uncomfortableness in this situation and one of the key things is if we did capture then it does capture back we do have the option then of putting pressure onto his knight and it's going to improve our position i took a long time over this from this movement here i took a long time because i did think well a smaller piece attacking the higher piece i mean the queen has got a gap to come here I saw this, yeah, so I thought, well, he's probably going to come and do that and put the check on the king. But that's where we can then go for the exchange of the queens. 
simplifying it even more but once that simplification comes in we're in better shape to actually own this file with the rooks so I thought so we captured and then they captured back so it's pretty straightforward for us actually leading onto the knight and as we mentioned the queen comes and puts a check on the king and then as we said we're just going to basically see if we're going to exchange off so we capture with the rook so we're expecting the knight to do some sort of fancy movement because he's going to be looking to get our rook off the board but we said we were going to double up straight away so there's no issues there his knight really doesn't have a major square to attack which is really good because we're going to be kind of owning this file as far as we can see when I did this move I did offer a draw again and he said oh I'm nearly there I'm nearly there but let's just play it through so I'm thinking okay maybe he's thinking my end game is not going to be as good I mean he's 350 points ahead of me 1657 I'm only 1308 but we have been practicing and we've learned a lot because <laughs> when I'm taking my time looking at this position I'm saying okay he has to take and we take now what does the position look like so far we have an elevated pawn here which is um, not doing too bad a job if his knight's coming in to block then that's fine we can start moving our knight maybe looking to come here if the rook wants to start playing down the bottom maybe just keep the knight here and just push up and push on oops excuse me push onto the knight tell him ask him what he's wanting to do and all the while really and truly we're trying to manage this file as best possible get our king up into the game looks fairly drawish to me so once I saw the king move I thought well, it's definitely a draw here dude I don't know so we pushed up with our king this rook move did throw me I looked at it and I thought rooks don't have any place in the center of the board and that's a key thing that we keep saying throughout our mantra isn't it I don't understand why that rook move was made I mean it's showing a draw here you know um, but I didn't understand that was he looking to come here or something I, I didn't get it it gave us the opportunity for a smaller piece attacking a higher piece to ask the question as to what does the knight actually want to do so the knight went back so if we're making the knight go back we're doing something right but you have to be careful with knights is where are you actually sending it to so he's potentially looking to come maybe here or push this pawn down and then hold the center and I thought the key move if I was playing black would be to get this pawn here so he could come into the center here and then he's got play here so the potential for our knight coming here would kind of not stop that action but you know um, it would equalize it and if he still went here anyway we would still go here because the danger of him coming here obviously he would have a fork on my king and my rook so a simple pawn push up would suffice so I saw all this type of pattern especially with the knight move back there so it feels good you're sending them away but you have to really look at well what are you actually giving them so we look to push uh, push onto the rook to say well what are you doing there you shouldn't be in the center of the ball and maybe try and get it squished in somewhere you know right over here somewhere and then it's going to be kind of useless gauge bar doesn't like what we've done I mean it's saying like what is it c5 or something pushing down here but the opponent didn't do that so they didn't see it and the magic pawn pushed down Gage Bar definitely doesn't like that move, but my opponent obviously has sights of coming here and going there. So a smaller piece attacking the higher piece, this rook really shouldn't be in the centre of the board. Gage Bar saying it's a draw with us doing that, it felt half decent to me, so I couldn't see what else he could do. I mean if he's going to drop here then the rook is out of the game. So they actually brought it to this spot and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I think we're actually winning here. I think we're actually winning here, but you know, 
I'm going to offer him a draw. Again. I know the guy, you know, uh, I know, I know, you know, we've seen each other on the league circuit and stuff like that. So, um, if he didn't like me doing it, he would have said, well, stop asking. He kept laughing every time. <laughs> I think we were a bit too noisy when we were laughing about me offering the draws. <laughs> I must have offered it about six times. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, so, now we're coming into this spot here, if the night's coming in, as we said. But, I do have sights of my own which was basically getting my knight to here and getting it to here potentially yeah but also it does have sights of controlling this square which is really quite meaty and it had, to me it looks like a winning square so the king comes down looking to support this area so we bring the knight up giving us options of this and this and this if the knight does jump here we do have this so this was the last time that I offered the draw and he said okay I will see what you do after this next move as you can see look at the gauge bar showing that we're winning I don't see the gauge bar during the game so I didn't know it was that winning but it felt good for me if somebody had said well if he had said no no to the draw I, th I do believe he may have struggled um, and we probably would have got an advantage because we were taking our time, we weren't rushing anything um, but I didn't want to rock the boat if I didn't need to so he did bring the knight down so he's obviously looking for the magic square so we pushed the pawn up and then he agreed to the draw only bit of artiness was that bishop move going for the bishop in the, into the corner and I saw that right from the early part and I just couldn't let it go I thought there's got to be some advantage there but the gauge bar showed there wasn't an advantage I should have just kept my position and just developed probably more so through the centre maybe my bishop would have been quite nice but hindsight though maybe their bishop could have been quite nice as well because it did have that potential threat area of putting pressure on my queen so maybe we did it right for ourselves I didn't want his bishop coming down here holding court on my king side so that's my rationale for doing it so I'm not going to beat myself up for that actually I think seeing that and actually taking action and especially when the knight came back and blocked the bishop then we could take appropriate action and, and try and get it off the board because I did think that that was going to turn into a powerful bishop that's my rationale, I'm sticking with it so a very interesting first league match and a very interesting week of chess from Saturday to Saturday um, really pleased with the results oh and by the way I actually got a grading prize from the uh, competition last week so that's really quite pleasing as well um, so all in all Chess has been good for me this week.